Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for our EMEA Six Dimensions in Lingotech. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the power to translate is now inside Adobe Experience Manager. Uh, it'll be myself, Calvin Sharps. So I'm Vice President of Marketing at Lingotech, and I have Dan Kelso, who is a uh, Systems Manager at, uh, at Six Dimensions, and I'll let him do a little more of his introduction in just a moment. Uh, just as a clarification, if you're not familiar with GoToMeeting, uh, in your upper right-hand corner, there is a little arrow button um, that can open and close that uh, little pane. Uh, we will be taking questions and answers after uh, the call or after uh, our, our parts here. And uh, you can go ahead and type those into that window, and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, if we run out of time and we don't have time to answer questions, we'll certainly follow up with you. Uh, after the call. Um, both uh, Lingotech and uh, Six Dimensions uh, have a series of, of webinars and you can go to our respective web pages and uh, look at the webinars pages to see a list of those. Um, they not only include uh, Adobe Experience Manager but other uh, integrations uh, and on Six Dimensions they talk about other uh, fascinating topics as well. I'm going to turn the time over for a few minutes uh, to Dan, and then Dan will turn it back to me, and then we'll do a, a quick demo, and then we'll go, go from there. Hey, thanks, Calvin. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit just about Six Dimensions and you know what we do. Um, so we're, we're part of 60 Global Technologies, uh, which is a uh, you know umbrella organization that's brought together some uh, marquee companies you know to build out a, a unified digital solution. Um, we have, we really do have a great team. You know, I'm really happy to be part of it, and I think there's some you know some great people that we have. Um, and you know, essentially, we're all about uh, using our team our team and capabilities to increase your uh, your revenue. You know, improve your ROI and give you a great experience. Uh, Kellen, next slide, please. So uh, we've been around since about 2004. Um, you know, we did about 15 million dollars in revenue. We have uh, actually, we're, we're the staff members actually even a bit low. We've been uh, growing pretty darn rapidly, so we're actually above uh, just above a hundred now. Um, you know, and we've been ranked the last few years on the Inc. Uh, uh, you know, on the Inc. list for the fastest growing companies in America. Um, you can see, you know, we've got our various markets that we serve. Uh, you know, across, pretty much across the board, we tend to, we tend to deal with very large, very complex situations, and uh, you know. Providing uh, solutions to companies that have run into problems uh, is, is actually kind of our bread and butter. Uh, you can also see our websites there. I, I'd highly recommend if you're, you know, a technical bend or if you uh, have some technical bend people on your staff, go ahead and check out the lab site. I would maintain a pretty active blog there that uh, talks about um, specifically, you know, experience manager, but the overall Adobe solution and uh, some hopefully helpful information. Uh, next slide, again, Kim. So, um, you know, we, we always talk about trying to deliver value. We, uh, 60 is actually based around six, uh, you can see them there, uh, core values uh, that, that our founder laid down when he started the company. So, uh, you know, whenever we deliver a solution or we augment your team, um, we keep these things in mind and we try to provide the smartest people uh, with the best expertise, but still fitting within that framework. You know, we're, we're, we're not big on having kind of the lone gunman guy that uh, comes in and uh, wrecks up the place. We want to make sure that our people can deliver consistently and with value. The next slide, see, please. So here's just some industry recognition. You know, uh, we'll be happy to talk any of, about any of these. Uh, but essentially just to know that, you know, we're a company that I think uh, everybody has the pulse on. Next uh, slide. And we do offer um, flexible solutions. So, you know, specifically around this connector, but just in general, um, we're willing to work with you as you need. Uh, next slide. So uh, we also have a team of uh, certified AEM architects and developers. Uh, we are uh, going to be uh, specialized in Adobe Experience Manager come, at, come the end of the quarter. Um, we have actually a large team of certified AEM 6 developers specifically. We're shooting for the latest uh, certification that's available. Um, 
we have, you know, uh, I don't know, decades of, of enterprise experience across, you know, the hundred people that we have. So I think, uh, you know, we have a great team. Yeah. Next slide. And up back to you, Kevin. Great, Dan. Thank you very much. As uh, everyone can see, uh, Six Dimensions is a, is a great partner of ours, and they also are a great partner in the Adobe ecosystem. And we are very proud and happy to uh, partner with these guys to help them or have them help us build our connector, uh, our Lingotech inside Adobe Experience Manager connector. And, and they've been a, a key reason that that's been successful. And Dan, why don't you go and just explain a little bit how we just got our approvals on that, the, the final and the, actually the, the first approval in the, uh, in the new 6.1 release and, and talk just a, maybe a couple of minutes or maybe a, a minute about that. Sure, no problem. Um, yeah, so as Kelvin mentioned, we were actually the first connector that was approved by Adobe. Um, there are others that have now, uh, you know, limboed in under that bar, but uh, Ling the Lingotech connector was the first one to be approved by Adobe. Um, it, it's just a sidebar to how we came about working with Lingotech. Um, about a year ago at this point, um, a, a colleague of mine, Bryce Acker, did a, a, a similar webinar talking about the API that he'd created while working with Adobe R&D. Uh, this was the original version of the translation API. Uh, Lingotech attended the webinar. They thought, you know, it was really interesting. And uh, essentially, we started working together from, um, you know, from this experience working with Adobe R&D. So we maintained some really deep contacts there, um, you know, and we've, we've uh, used that expertise to be able to build out what, uh, what Adobe's called one of the best connectors they've seen. Um, and I think there's a couple, you know, features in there that, that uh, kind of smooth out a few rough edges around that API um, and that really do provide a great experience for it. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I want to just give a little bit of context how we ended up here. And, and at this point, working with Six Dimensions, we feel like uh, the Adobe Experience Manager Connector um, is one of our flagship products. So we're very proud to work with these folks. Um, I'm again going to just jump into link and talk a little bit about Lingotech and talk about the problems and solutions of translations uh, in general, and then we'll we'll have a demo. We'll show how we actually solve those problems in uh, Adobe Experience Manager. So we're Lingotech. We call ourselves the Translation Network, and just a high-level problem about translation, and this kind of goes across the industry, and it goes across using different content management systems, or if you're using documents that you need to be translated, if they're Word or kind of PowerPoint kinds of stuff. But the problem is, is it's very time-consuming, and it and it can be very expensive. And you can see all of the processes here for a traditional translation project that is handled offline. And what I mean by that is it's typically handled, um, and offline might be a wrong term because stuff is sent across the FTP and there's some emailing of files. Of course, stuff is tracked in, uh, in spreadsheets and, and so forth. But what we do is we programmatically eliminate a lot of the steps that are here in the process and make it easier so you don't have uh, quite as much overhead in your translation work. And so Lingotech enables you to create and manage all of your multilingual content inside of your enterprise applications. And we do that by leveraging people, process, and technology. And we combine this with a cloud-based translation management system that empowers your enterprises to, to engage with your customers globally. Now, the solution is, uh, again, at a high level, we have uh, a Lingotech inside connector. Um, it sits inside Adobe Experience Manager. And uh, that's the, the piece that uh, Six Dimensions has ha helped us build and help us, is helping us promote. Um, we take content outside of the of Adobe Experience Manager and we push it via a multilingual API set that gets pushed up into Lingotech's cloud-based translation management system. The translation management system uh, has a, a lot of advantages. First of all, is we have what are called translation memories and translation memories are previously translated content that you can reuse and repurpose. And I'll go a little bit more into detail on what, what benefits those are in just a minute. Um, we also have glossaries and terminologies so you can keep track of different uh, keywords that you've bought or specific branding elements that you want to keep control of. And then we couple this on, on top of a very powerful translation workflow engine and project management engine which allows you to do professional translation, community or crowdsource translation or machine translation. 
Um, you can do a combination of those workflows. Um, you can do one or all, or you can start at the bottom of the stack and work up. But once the translation is done, and we'll say that it's, it's finished, we can then publish that back up into Adobe Experience Manager. Now let's say you have a change on a particular page uh, on, your, on your site, and you want to uh, have that retranslated, but you've only changed one paragraph or one sentence. When we push that or publish it back up into Lingotext TMS, we keep track of the changes and we're able to only have the translators translate that one segment or sentence again. So this saves time and money of having to keep track of all of those files, the changes, um, and so forth. And so you have this kind of continuous publishing model. That's why we, we uh, illustrate this in kind of a circle pattern because you're constantly updating your site, no longer a site static. Uh, you're adding blog posts or you're changing content, and it's able to keep up with that kind of a system uh, in a dynamic situation. So how do we solve this problem? Well, everyone else in the industry makes you do it the hard way. If you look at a traditional translation process, you have typically two folks that are involved uh, on top of the translators themselves. You have a project manager and a web administrator. Um, project managers keeping ta ta track of all of the daily tasks. The web admins actually touching code or the one that's touching the website itself. And you can see that you have all of these steps and, and different colors identifying which of the you know project manager or the web admin is having to do. Now, when you look at these other translation companies, um, they're only helping you with one step of the process. So when you work with them, all of that is offline. So that's what I meant earlier as an offline process. You typically gather these files and export them as either a .po or XML or you're, you're sending them Word docs or copying and pasting. And you send it to them and they do the translation and then they then return those documents back to you. And you have to then re put them into, into your system or in this case Adobe Experience Manager. Now, how hard can that really be to do all those processes? Well, you take how many languages you have, and then you time that by the number of pages that you have, and the words per page, and how many people you have involved in the process. You might have different managers in different countries that are, are helping to translate or, or helping to approve content. Um, and then you talk about the steps in your process and manage across multiple time zones it actually can get very complex. And so what Lingotech does is, uh, is, is takes this legacy translation workflows that can't keep up, and there's too many manual steps that you see into the process and not enough automation, and we start to make those uh, more automated. So if you look at the Lingotech translation, translator connector piece, which is the project management piece of this, these are functions that are handled within the, uh, within the Adobe Experience Manager themselves. So by programmatically extracting the content, um, you, can, you can send it up automatically or, or you set it up as manual send up. But you can, you know, if a change happens on a page, you can automatically send it up into the up to the Lingotech Translation Management System and start to do your translation processes. And then when it's done, it just automatically comes back. So you've eliminated having to FTP, recopy and paste. You don't have to format. Um, you don't, you know, the in-context review can happen at the translation level. Um, you can have localization happen at the translation level. So all of these steps start to be eliminated. And then the connecting pieces are the translator pieces that are handled by, by Lingotech themselves. And so you can start to see uh, the the benefits of all of these pieces hap, hap, ha, happening. So you either have programmatically happening in Adobe Experience Manager or you have pieces and parts that are being handled by Lingotech's translation management system. So what this means is it's a win-win situation for um, translating and making things quicker. Now just to talk a little bit about Lingotech's complete offering, we're not just a cloud-based translation management system. We also have what we call Lingotech Inside, and that's the actual connector. In this case, it's Adobe Experience Manager. We also have about 30 other connectors, so if you have other content management systems, we can help you out with that as well. Um, but certainly, um, uh, once you have content inside of Adobe Experience Manager, you can push that up into the cloud-based translation management system. We do offer professional translation services. Um, that's not a requirement of using the system, but we do offer or augment that because some folks just don't have that service already set up. 
and then those folks work in the TMS, the TMS works with the inside, and you can see again this is a continuous life cycle here of, of our product offering. So we feel like we have a, a very kind of holistic view of how we ingest content, get it translated, and then send it back to the enterprise application. So some high-level features in each of the uh, in each of these sections are each of the inside modules are built specifically for each enterprise application. So in this case, Adobe Experience Manager, which is built by our connector, built by Six Dimension, is built specifically for uh, Adobe Experience Manager. There are, there are some other companies that offer connectors, but they're generic connectors that only do the FTP part part of that. So there's an extraction and a re a return path there. They don't do a deep integration where you can go into workflows and, and manage uh, you know all of the uh, look and feel and that kind of stuff. If there's no emailing files, they're so hard to monitor the progress. And then and our translation management system has a real strong part with project management. Uh, we do have a, a world-class translation workbench so that you can do customized workflows. Um, customized workflows uh, can be based on uh, different content types that can be based on the actual languages. So we have different, uh, you know, different languages can actually go through different workflows. So if you have, uh, you know, one workflow for uh, Japanese might not be the same workflow that you run for French. And so you can actually, when the content gets up, you can assign different workflows based on the, the not only the type of content but also the language. Um, and then, of course, we talked about translation memories earlier, and translation memories are, are previously translated content uh, that is stored in the system and is reused. And so a lot of content is, you know, you know, it's 80, 60 to 80 percent the same across enterprises. And if you start to use translation memories, then you can start to save a lot, actually, in some cases, up to 50 percent and more in translation costs by reusing your translations. A lot of other companies don't let you reuse their translations. They want you to translate the entire thing over again because they charge you by the word. Um, we also have terminology management and machine translation, but all of this uh, lets you capture, reuse, and recycle your content. Um, and of course, we have services, and there's different things that we offer in that, including you know localization and and uh, trans creation, translation. And then some of these other items over here, content governance, solution deployment, et cetera. So, you know, across the entire spectrum of translation, uh, we can certainly help help you out. So let's talk just a, a few, uh, one minute about uh, workflows. And a lot of uh, other companies will, will say you have to do professional translation. Now, certainly we agree with that to some degree, but there's some content, and we call this the content value index, that just doesn't, isn't worth translating and we mean by you know comments or maybe blog posts are, are fine doing machine translation um, and using translation memories because you're just trying to get the gist of it or it's a community uh, involvement and you're just trying to get that content out um, so that's very quick and very inexpensive to do now community translation can be crowdsource translation it can be community translation it could be in-country marketing managers we kind of throw that into a bucket of, of you provide the, the translators and, and we allow you to have those people participate in it to help you drive your cost down. So again, we don't require professional translation services. If you have your own translators, of it, be it a community, crowdsource, or whatever, they're welcome to come into the system and use that, uh, the translation workbench to help translate and that uh, drives your cost down as well. Now, of course, we also offer professional translation. We have 100 plus languages that we support, um, and also uh, 5,000 plus uh, linguists that are specialized and certified and trained. Uh, so, if you need to have content uh, translated professionally, uh, certainly we can help you out as well. But as you can see, you can use different workflows for different types of content, and again, also for different languages. And so, one example is we have a client that has uh, you know, an in-country marketing manager in France, and so they'll go through automatic translation, and then they'll use their community user, their in-country marketing manager, to do the review on that, and then that goes live. Whereas they don't have anybody in Japan, and so we actually do the, the translation for Japanese. And so you can see that the different workflows, even for a particular company, based on languages, is very helpful. 
So now I'm going to turn the time over, uh, get get to the real meat of the uh, conversation here. Everyone wants to see the, the, the demo inside of Adobe Experience Manager. So I'll go ahead and I will uh, switch the screen over to, to Dan and let him. Dan, can you change yourself? I don't see you in the all right, so uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen now at this point. Um, I can, Dan. Looks good on my end. Okay, great. So we're showing uh, Adobe Experience Manager version uh, 6.1, uh, the, the latest beta that's currently in progress right now. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it is now orange. Look how orange it is. It is orange. Um, so, this, so we're going to go ahead and run through a quick demo here. Um, so the first part of, uh, of, of this, we're just going to show creating a project. So a project is used by the connector uh, to contain the content that is in progress in translation. So I'm going to go ahead and create it as translate to Russian. And the project, the project uh, as part of it, you set up the source and target languages. So you, you could create a project per translation, and then you could also set up the projects to do different methods of translation. So let's say that you had a website that, you know, as Calvin mentioned, one portion of it is using machine translation for your communities, for example. Um, you could have uh, a different configuration for the community versus the main part of the website and assign the content appropriately. So we're going to go ahead and, go ahead, sorry, we're going to go ahead and create this one with a source language of English, a target language of Russian, using human translation, and using our LingoTech pro, uh, provider. Uh, now, when, when you go ahead and configure this, you, you could very well see multiple cloud configurations here for every different uh, configuration that you have around you know, uh, using different accounts on LingoTech or using uh, different workflows. Go ahead and click Create. And we'll get, we can go ahead and see the project here. So this is uh, on, on the left-hand side, you can see we have the general configuration. Uh, the middle panel here is around uh, what uh, items are in translation, obviously nothing yet. Uh, the tasks allow you to assign items to be worked with inside of AEM for the team, which is the furthest to the uh, right here uh, panel. So now that we have the project created, I'm, gonna go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the sites view. The sites, if you're familiar with it uh, already, uh, is just a listing of the various websites that are available inside of Adobe Experience Manager. In this case, we're going to go to Geometrics. And I'm, going to go, I'm going to go ahead and create a new homepage for our Russian homepage. So are you the two-letter language code? And it is, in fact, Russian. You know, and I'm going to go ahead and create that. At this point, you know, it's not very exciting. This is just a, a container. But next, I switch to the English page, and now, so you've got your you've got your page, you, or you got your site started. You want, uh, and you want to be able to add some content. So the easiest way to start with that is take the content you've already got and translate that to the new language. So we're going to create a language copy. Now, the language copy within AEM copies all the content by default, but you can of course exclude or add content as needed. So we'll go ahead and just start by translating all of the product data to Russian. So you click that there and you see that now. So if I go back, I'm going to deselect this and go back to the Russian site. You can see here we now have product pages that are just in English because we've just created a language, language copy. We have not actually translated anything yet. So I'm going to go into my project. At this point, you may wordsmith things a little bit. You've played around with removing pages, adding pages, whatever it would happen to be. And I'm going to go ahead and now add them as being ready for translation. So I go ahead and select my site, select the product pages. And you can see it populates all of the pages you know, down through here. And at this point, it's in draft. So this job is ready to be sent, but has not yet been sent. So I can go ahead and click Start. Pretty easy. So what this is doing in the background is it's going to go ahead and uh, loop down through all of the uh, all of this all of the pages on the site and send them to LingoTech to be translated. Uh, this process takes you know a couple minutes here, and it's using LingoTech's API uh, to send them to, to serialize the pages and send them through uh, all transparently without any you know uh, FTPing or manual intervention. 
So hopefully when I switch back here, I should start seeing things pop through. So I'm going to navigate back to my Russian site. It looks like things have been sent, but maybe aren't quite available yet. So let's click on through here. Great. So this has been sent, but it has not been picked up yet. So there's two parts of the process, naturally. The first part is sending it for translation. And then there's a job that runs inside of AEM that just essentially pulls and says, hey, are you done yet? And pulls down the changes and merges them into the page. So the first part here has been done. And we see this icon. This icon is integrated into the look and feel of an experience manager. And it allows you to uh, see the status of a particular page to update that status. Oh, look, it's complete. So if I refresh this page, look, it's magic. been sent, received, you magic? and you can see the translation's been updated here. So this allows you to update the status and see where the page is. It also allows you to open the Lingotech Workbench and update translation. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Workbench. And the Lingotech Workbench is a proprietary feature to Lingotech with a deep integration into AEM in this, in this case. Uh, so the Workbench allows you to update the translation from the context of the page without having to leave Experience Manager. Uh, this is going to be great for anyone that's going to need to do manual tweaks uh, so you don't have to send emails back and forth and deal with all that stuff. You could literally just send a translator to this page and say, hey, let's go update this. Now, since it uses translation memory, you can see here all the different sentences, all the phrases are separately highlighted, and you're allowed to update them one at a time. So we're going to go ahead and just modify this. I only speak very basic Russian, so we're just going to do this in English, but Dan was here. So I decided, you know, I, this, this text isn't exactly what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and update it. So added something in there, click Save and Close, and you can see the workbench goes away. At this point, if I click Date Update Translation, it's going to think for a few seconds here and refresh the page. And now you can see that it's updated the text on the, on the page. And Dan was here. Yeah. And so you can do that for any, any of the text that's uh, on the page at all. And if we switch back and refresh this page here, we can see that the other pages have also been sent. Uh, you see triangles in progress, but uh, I don't even remember what this was anymore. <laughs> Mandelbrot, maybe. Yeah, Mandelbrot has been translated. So this this kind of shows you the uh, you know the power, and I think that the quality of the user experience this connector has. Hey Dan, this is uh, this is Calvin. This is exciting, and one thing I'd like to note too is there's a, the ability to do in context review as well. Uh, with this, so when you get uh, a translation uh, sent up to Lingotech and it comes back, and and you notice that, let's say there's a localization issue, you can go in and make that change, you know, on the fly, update that in the workbench, um, and uh, and 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 show that very quickly. So what's uh, what's exciting about that is you can have your like Dan was saying, you can actually have your translators if you like. Uh, do the updates uh, kind of on the fly and, and, and in, in, in uh, serial uh, here. Great. So, uh, Calvin, mind if I hand it back to you and we can finish off uh, discussing some of the use cases of Lingotech? Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes here and just talk about some case studies. Um, these are very high-level case studies, but just to give folks on the on the webinar an idea of the types of, of projects that we work on in uh, different clients. Um, so we work on a, a, a project called the Tizen project um, and Intel's a, a big supporter of that and they are using Lingotech for localization of what they call their Tizen initiative into six language into six different languages. And so what is Tizen? Um, Tizen is an open source standards-based software platform uh, that they're leading um, supporters for mobile phone operators, device manufacturers, such as smartphones, tablets, netbooks, uh, in, in vehicle, infotainment devices, and smart TVs. And this is going uh, directly head-to-head -head against Android and iOS, um, you know, so there's an alternative there. But they have a developer uh, community forum, and this really, you know, kind of displays the community aspect of this. Um, but they wanted to have the translation, you know, currently was, or, you know, before was a manual process. It wasn't synchronized, and they were not leveraging any existing translation assets. Again, those are the translation memories. So as a result, they were able to do a 55% reduction in translation turnaround. 
and a 45% reduction in translation costs and they were able to fully automate with real-time project oversight. And so what was interesting about this one is this goes back to their community or crowdsource where they were machine translating content and running it through translation memories and then they were asking the community members to do a post edit and they were able to do that post edit uh, directly inside of, of uh, the application and so that saved them a lot of time and money because they were uh, you know not having to pay for professional translation so the community was set up to understand that content in there was machine translated and, and wasn't super accurate so machine translation can be anywhere from 60 to 80 percent accurate based on the type of content uh, and the language itself um, but they were able to uh, then have their folks do post edit on it and and make that content better once the content is post edited by a human we then store that as a translation memory and they can reuse and repurpose that content so you can start to see how effective that happens over some amount of time to save and re reuse that asset the next one we're going to talk about just briefly is a company called HGST. Um, they are a Western digital company. Those are the hard drive folks, um, and they wanted to launch a world web uh, their website, worldwide website, excuse me, um, in eight different languages. And obviously, they would like to scale. and And I think at this point, if I'm not mistaken, they're up to twelve. Um, but anyway. HGST is, has this unmatched reputation for reliability um, on their hard disks and also solid state drives, if you're familiar with SSD drives. Um, they manage and protect you know, a, a good portion of the world's data and their drives are relied through enterprises, internet companies, uh, hosting companies, um, et cetera, et cetera. But they have hundreds of website changes each month and so you can imagine over eight to twelve languages and a hundred changes uh, you know that's that becomes uh, you know eight thousand changes uh, or eight hundred changes um, and uh, it was very expensive slow costly and error prone so they were able to realize ROI in the first th three months of use and anytime the content changes automatically it's identified and the, they have the workflow automatically start um, so they have full automated uh, and real-time project oversight. So for them, being able to keep track of all these changes not in a spreadsheet um, was very, very interesting and, and cost-effective for them. Now SketchUp um, is, a, is a company that was originally um, a Google project. It's an online drafting drawing tool and it was bought by a company called Trimble um, and they wanted to have their product forms and knowledge base articles up to date in nine languages. Again, this is kind of a community aspect um, one. Um, but Sketch, SketchUp has 3D software, again, it's for architects, designers, buildings, and engineers. They have 30 million unique active uh, activations a year, and 40% of that's from outside the U.S. So you can see that they have a, a good portion of their uh, customer base out of, you know, outside of English in the U.S. And so they needed to keep the content up to date. Um, they needed to unlock product forms and knowledge-based content in the customer's preferred language and they wanted to drive down um, uh, to drive CSAT and new activations to expand into their Asian Pacific region. All in all, reducing tech support incidents through web self-service. So they wanted folks to be able to go find and answer their own questions without having to you know, email or call customer support. Uh, SketchUp is now fully integrated with Lingotech inside environment and extends subject matters into the top nine languages and they have the ability to you know, quickly keep product forms and knowledge base articles up to date, uh, measurable CPSAT improvement um, and, and reduce support tickets. So for them that was a huge deal as well. So that kind of concludes um, the webinar case studies, the demo and um, what not. You can see we have contact information um, for both companies here on the screen. Um, if you have any questions, let's jump on to Q&A for a few minutes and see if anybody has uh, any questions. So Kelvin, uh, the, the first one I see is from Colin Long and he asks, how does this differ from SDL TMS and the clay tablet com connector? Uh, it looks fairly similar uh, in, in CQ5, or sorry, CQ6. 
Sure. Do you want to take the Do you want to take the position of the connector itself, and then I'll, I'll answer our TMS, the TMS part of that. Sure. Yeah. From from the connector's perspective, um, there's a deeper integration back into uh, the Lingotech. Uh, TMS than most of the other connectors provide. Um, it does also support both machine and human translation, which not all the connectors. I'm not sure specifically about SDL and clay tablet. And then uh, in the clay tablet specific case, um, I know that they do have a connector. However, it isn't, uh, at least to my knowledge, um, fully compliant with the Adobe translation API, which they're going to be pushing, uh, or the, which they've already created in AM 6.1 and is really the standard for how to do translation. Yeah, and certainly from the TMS perspective, you know, typically SDL's TMS is a premise-based um, translation management system that you purchase. Um, I know that they do have a cloud offering of that. I'm not sure what you're on on that. So um, the biggest difference of using a cloud-based translation management system is you can store the translation memories and glossaries and terminologies in the cloud, and then as translators or professional translators, whether it's community or crowdsourced or professional translators are updating the translations and the translation memories. Those translation memories are available in real time. Uh, typically with SDL, um, they send around a package to uh, the translator. The translator works on their desktop, uh, so they're even emailing and sending around files. Um, and so translations are not updated in real time, and, and the translation memories are not being able to be reused in real time. Again, if, they're, if you're using a cloud-based product, that might not be... Uh, completely accurate. I have to look at that specifically. Um, Clay Tablet was actually purchased by Lionbridge, so it's actually a competing product. Um, and I know that Clay Tablet works a little bit autonomously, but uh, really, what Clay Tablet is, uh, or you know, what Clay Tablet is trying to do is to push um, professional translation work to Lionbridge. So you have a little bit of a conflict of interest there. Um, I'm not sure how much. Um, you know, from my perspective, it's it's a little easier to work with one one vendor and then have the option to be able to do machine, community, crowdsourced, or professional translation. Both SDL and Lionbridge will try to push you away from doing any of your own translations. They obviously want the professional translation work. Okay. Um, but uh, certainly from an API level, um, you know, they, you know, we both have to connect to the, uh, you know, the Adobe APIs that are, you know, standard set for Adobe. Okay. And then I hope that answers at least parts We'd love to give you a demonstration of how our TMS works, and just you can do a line-by-line -line comparison of what what you think their uh, you know good spots are, and we can try to counteract that or give you some you know alternatives that we feel are better workarounds on that. Great. And then Fraser's asks, asks uh, what are the secure uh, security controls to push publish to from the TMS, given that content is commercially sensitive? Uh, yeah. Do you want to take that? You can talk about the OAuth on that, and it's obviously sure. center secure socket layer. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess the, the first part here is, is that, uh, and you know, maybe I can go ahead and share my screen here real quick. Yeah, it is probably nice. So essentially when you configure the, uh, the, the connector, uh, with Lingotech and, and AEM, um, you log in with the, uh, with the Lingotech TMS. And at that point it sends an OAuth or an OAuth authentication. So your credentials aren't directly shared. Uh, and then it uses, uh, SSL from there on out to encrypt the connection between, um, a, your AEM instance and Lingotech, so your your content is fully encrypted and uh, you know not sniffable by anyone uh, with malicious intent. And I can certainly um, you know point you. I, to be honest with you, I don't have off the top of my head the security controls that we have on our side, but we do have security audits. Um, we do uh, have clients such as the federal government use our software. Um, and folks um, uh, in different kind of industries that are, are, are very sensitive with data. So um, if you were to send, you know, myself an email specifically, I can get you all of the, the specific security protocols and get you, a, you know, either a PowerPoint or a Word doc that will explain all of that. Um, and certainly I, I'm sure we can meet or exceed uh, any of the expectations that you are, uh, that you're, you're, you're looking at. Okay, and Fraser's also asking uh, about the cost models, um, you know, by this very service offerings. I don't know how much detail you want to get into this, or this would just be better, something better handled uh, offline. Yeah, translation memories are are, are specific to a single organization. Um, uh, there is an opportunity um, to 
you know, Lingotech has its own translation memories uh, that we've curated, and you have the opportunity to to leverage those. Uh, but certainly, any of the translation memories that you have are, are yours and and yours alone, and those are all uh, cordoned off. And, and specifically, we can talk about that again with the security question earlier, and then I get that specific to you. Um, the translation memories are yours. There's uh, a lot of companies will hold those hostage a little bit. Like if you don't pay them, they don't give them to you. Um, your memories are yours. Um, those are your assets. Uh, we're simply a storage mechanism for those. Those are all stored as, uh, you know, they're called TMX files or I think TBX. I can't remember the exact uh, those, but you can certainly import ones that you have existing and you can export out of ours if. Uh, uh, you know, at any given time, or if if you you know are no longer doing business with them, you can take those with you. Okay. Um, let's see. So, next question: uh, Is the TMS available in Europe as well as the USA? Uh, yes. Okay. Easy answer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Andrew's asking, uh, does the connector have the ability to uh, the capability to schedule translation, let's say, once a day? So, yes, um, the way the way the connector actually works is it's kicked off by a workflow that's provided through the translation API. Um, that workflow could be scheduled. Um, now, you know, I mean, when you do that, of course, using translation memory, uh, the content that's already been translated wouldn't be retranslated. You know, it does keep track of the document IDs between you know, the, the, the pages in AEM and the documents sent to Lingotech. Um, you know, I kind of need to know a little bit more about why you'd want to do that, but yes, yes, this, this, this would certainly be possible to schedule translation. Um, and given that it is an AEM workflow, you know, there's a lot of things you can do around customizing that to have, you know, in, in this particular case, uh, you know, on this particular site, you can put it translations live or have it go through an approval process or anything like that, you know, kind of the world is your oyster around customizing that uh, workflow. Yeah, there is, we do have a lot of clients that like to have automatic, you know, have it sent automatically, uh, you know, the second something happens and we do have others that do do batching at a certain particular time of day um, and it's up to their content governance and how they work. Um, one example of that is we do uh, stuff, uh, a lot of stuff with Prince's Cruises, and they actually operate all of these. Uh, they have a, you know 20 different cruise ships that all have content curators and creators on board those ships, and because of the satellite bandwidth issues, they they will do all of their translation or they'll do all of their content. And then, you know, at a, a time when their bandwidth is not being utilized by all of their customers, they'll actually batch, all, send all of that up via satellite to our translation management system. It's actually a pretty fascinating case study. Um, and then that is then returned back within, you know, some amount of SLA time period uh, as, as translated. Um, and so certainly batching is, uh, can be done and it can be automatic or not, but they are, they're doing it simply because they have to have um, the ability to conserve their you know, bandwidth resources on their ships. Or in some cases, they're out of satellite link um, with, with connecting. So, okay. um, I see the next one. Fraser has another quick question on cost model. Yep. Um, there, is a, there is a connector uh, price pricing. There is a connection price to the translation management system. And then uh, professional translation is done by the word. Um, there's a combination of all, how all of those work and, and depending on a variety of uh, how many languages and how many words you're translating, um, the cost would be determined based on that. So it, it's a difficult to just say it's X amount of dollars. Um, you'd need to uh, sit down with a, an account executive and kind of map out and model uh, what you're trying to accomplish and, and there's a price list of all of these things. And then you know, based on volume and stuff, there could potentially be some discounting there. Um, but you would have to sit down with them to get the cost. It's it's not something that we uh, we share across uh, a webinar. Okay, uh, Miguel is asking, uh, can you use any file format for the program? So, uh, if you don't mind, Kevin, I'll go ahead and jump in on this one. So, yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Essentially, the connector will translate any content uh, that's inside of AEM pages. Um, including both the page content as well as the metadata for the pages. Um, it does also support the translation of uh, certain types of assets. 
primarily you're talking about text-based assets there. So uh, images and that sort of thing um, are, are not uh, going to be directly translated. But, you know, anything you think of that you type into, it will translate. So uh, it'll do uh, PDFs, um, Word documents, that sort of thing. Uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah, we support on top of XML and, and .po files and, and whatnot, we support 35, I believe, or 40 plus. I have a list of them on my website of document types, and most of those are based around uh, Microsoft Office and obviously Open Office. And then you get into stuff uh, like uh, Adobe products, uh, like PDFs and um, InDesign documents. Um, certainly, uh, most, if not all, of those are supported uh, as as part of that. If they are not living in um, Adobe Experience Manager, those can be uh, uploaded separately into the TMS, um, or certainly, uh, you, you know, you can create a character to to ingest those as well. And then the last question: uh, Does the TMS have translation memories and glossaries for Indian regional languages? Uh, certainly, we can store those based on locale code. Okay. So yes. All right. Except if it's if it's a locale code that's supported. Yeah. Actually, okay. are you still seeing? It says under the licensing model for the connector. Um, I I I don't know the exact answer to that question, so we'll get back to you on that. I, yeah, I apologize. I think I think I have to respond to that, but essentially the way the connector licensing works is there's you know there's a, there's an upfront fee uh, for the uh, in support installation and that sort and training, um, and then uh, you know it's essentially a service charge from there on out. 